Hey, how are we doing there, everyone? Welcome back. So, a little while ago, we did a video on the fastest way to learn clutch control. We did that video on my Wise Ninja 125. I'll leave it up in the top corner for you to watch afterwards if you want to. But ever since then, we've had a lot of comments about whether or not you can apply that same technique on bigger bikes. So that's what we're going to do here today on the legendary Kawasaki ZZR 1400. We're going to try out the whole clutch control thing, and we'll see if it can be done. But yeah. Let's go. So, for those of you that didn't watch that video or haven't caught it, we'll just uh, kind of run through what the technique was. Basically, it is to use the clutch without any throttle. And it sounds a bit counterintuitive because most of the time you'll get instructors for both driving cars or motorcycles teaching you to use a little bit of throttle with the clutch, but you don't have to do that. Every single motorcycle, at least every, every bike I've ridden, has enough power to ride itself on the clutch. Okay, no, no throttle needed. And if anything, it's actually harder to do on smaller bikes because they don't have as much torque. And the more torque a motorcycle produces, the easier this is, but the faster you will go. I mean, I'm here in first gear and I'm going already 9, 10 mile an hour. And that's it. So yes, in a nutshell, yes, this technique can be done on bigger bikes. Any bike, any bike, any bike, you should be able to do this. A motorcycle should produce more than enough torque at idle, at idle revs to do this. And more often than not, guys, I'm not using the accelerator anyway if I'm just doing slow speeds, you know, if I'm just doing start-stop traffic and things like that, I'm not using the accelerator whatsoever. Yeah, doing that's a bad idea. <laughs> Take it, taking your hands totally off the steering wheel. But the one thing I do want you to remember though, especially if you, I wouldn't recommend this, but if you are learning to ride a motorcycle on a big bike, keep your foot covering that brake pedal, that rear brake pedal when you're, when you're practicing this. And keep your other hand here, just in case, okay? Feathering that brake, just in case just in case you end up giving it just a little bit, because look, you know, just that little bit of, of torque just all of a sudden jumped me forward, you know? Wait, it doesn't, it doesn't take much to launch you very fast, very quickly on a big motorcycle like this. But look, whatever you do, just learn on something that is reasonable, okay? Learn to ride on something that's reasonable at least before jumping on a motorcycle like this. But yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's do it again. Let's, let's turn around. go got just enough room here all right so let's come to a complete stop again okay and totally off the gas or totally off the accelerator here we go this is all at idle this is all at idle speeds okay so what's that 1100 rpm after the bike normally bikes will warm up around 1900 rpm 1800 rpm something like that and then they'll get down to 1100 that's usually where they'll sit and you can do this at those RPMs. You can do it. You can do this at 1,000 RPM. You can do the same thing in a car, guys, as well. But believe it or not, you can do this in a car. And it's funny enough. It's, it's how I taught my wife to drive: is by just operating the clutch on its own without any throttle. You don't need any throttle to learn how to operate the clutch. You can even change gears with just idle. I'll show you. Let's turn back around. Okay, so we'll do it again. All right, so hand off the uh, off the accelerator. By the way, I would recommend that if you are doing this, if you're practicing, keep your hand on there anyway, just in case, as I mentioned earlier. All right, so we're in first gear at the moment, and hands totally off the clutch. The bike is riding itself. Let's go into second. Again, just slowly release the clutch. And there you go, we're in second. Shall we see, shall we see how far we can go? Here's third. Um, again, this is all because of the bike's torque. This bike produces a load of torque. Let's try fourth. <laughs> yep, we can do it. We can do it without stalling. There's, there's me just like, yeah, in front of someone. <laughs> yeah, just being stupid. But there you go. But yeah, it is surprisingly easy, okay? So if I just pull over here a second. Yeah, so all you're doing is you're just trying to find the point where the bike moves forward on its own, okay? So you're just being very gentle. 
very gentle on the clutch let the bike move itself forward don't release all the way though right because if, if i if i get to that point there where the bike starts to move forward and then dump it you know just let it go entirely if i just put the bike in neutral just show you so if i go from here to there where the bike starts moving forward and then dump it you will stall okay you've got to have a nice gentle release so you get to the point where the bike starts moving forward keep releasing ever so slowly keep releasing keep releasing and then i am all the way here's second here's third here's fourth here's fifth <laughs> this is insane and here's sixth I'm so curious about how fast this bike can go at just idle. I mean, that's 20 miles an hour right there. <laughs> that's so cool. Should we try it? Should, should we try and use the whole the whole length of this road here? All right. So let's let's see. Let's see here. All right. So no no throttle. Second. We're there. Third. We're there. Fourth. We're there. Fifth. And sixth. Let's see how fast we can go. If we can get to 22 mile an hour, that that would be incredible. It's it's holding around about 20, maybe 20, 21, maybe. It was getting there. It was slowly, slowly getting up there. So yeah, maybe it had a little bit, a little bit more to give. Maybe it can do 20, 22 mile an hour. But yeah, let's let's try again. So here's second, third. Fourth, fifth, and sixth. All right. Oh, it's struggling. It's struggling because it's, it's under 1,000 RPM there, but because it's just because I'm rushing because I haven't got a lot of road here. <laughs> so that, that's that's about as as much as it as much as it will do is 20 21 mile an hour, but. That's what I'm saying, guys. Uh, clutch control on a bigger motorcycle is actually easier because you have that torque to assist you. When you don't have it, that's when you really got to feel it out. But this, again, though, for me, that's why it's really important to practice on a smaller bike because you actually learn that clutch control better. You have better clutch control skills on a smaller bike from learning on a smaller bike. That's interesting. The, bike, the bike's revving, revving up a little bit now. To I don't know. May, maybe, maybe it's because I, I ran it under under uh, under 1,000 RPM or something. But but yeah, it, this honestly, you can do this on any any bike, any bike. It's funny. I mean, every single time whenever I get another motorcycle, I'm going to try it and see if this works. See if I find a bike where this doesn't work. Maybe with some sport bikes it won't work. You know, the high revving sport bikes, maybe. But even then, I'm pretty sure on my old CBR 600RR, I used to be able to do this as well. And then, of course, once you get more confident, once you get once you get to that point there, because the clutch is fully engaged, then all you need to do is just open the throttle, pull back on the throttle, and then the bike moves itself forward. So you don't have to use any throttle whatsoever, guys. You don't have to use any acceleration whatsoever to engage the gears. All right? You don't. You know, I'll demonstrate one more time here. Okay? Nice and easy. Here we go. No gas. No gas. No gas. Boom. There we go. You might find it a little bit harder to balance the bike because, of course, you're, you're pulling away quite slowly. I mean, if I, if I pull away with some acceleration here, it's much easier to balance the bike, if you know what I mean. But again, that teaches you balance. It helps with balance. So it's not just about clutch control this. Learning this technique also helps with your balance of the bike at slow speeds. You know, being able to do turns like this, it helps with that. But yeah, guys and girls, I mean, I had a, quite a lot of people asking me the same question on that video. So that's why I thought, look, I'll just do this one just to get it out of the way and I'll tag it in the original clutch control video. But Honestly, you can do this on any bike, on any bike. The reason why I did it on the YS125 is because, I mean, that's the bike that most people are going to be learning on, at least specifically here in the UK. Most people are going to be learning to ride on a smaller motorcycle. 
So that's why I did it on that. Most of the time, whenever we're doing learner videos, guys, it's on the little bikes because, again, here in the UK, in Europe, that's how most riders start off. They have to start off on the smaller, smaller bikes. They haven't got a choice. It's law. But anyway, thank you ever so much for watching this video. Definitely leave a like, hit subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.